Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to your Sunday School les lesson. We are so thankful um, that we are able to worship together today. And Melora is going to open us up in prayer as we get started with our lesson. Okay. Um, Lord, thank you for, the, for today. Um, Lord, please be with um, the people who are watching this video today. If you place anything on their hearts, Lord, um, to be with them and be with everyone who is sick. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come back to church and to be in your house. Well, this week we're going to talk about David and Goliath. Um, we have a lot of preconceptions. We, we come in with some ideas, and uh, I hope that you'll learn something from this like we did when we were preparing for it. So, um, last week we learned about the anointing of David as a future king. Uh, God chose David from among the Israelites, not because of his physical stature or his skills, but because he was a man of God's own heart. David was not perfect, and he was a sinful man um, like every other, but he sought God's will. On today's account, um, we're going to talk about an event in David's life that we're all familiar with, and that's David and Goliath. What do, uh, what do y'all know about David and Goliath, just to start with? Um, David and Goliath is like a story that like, it seems like everyone would know, mm -hmm. because you just hear it so many times as a kid, and as you get older... What do you think of David? What was David? He was um, a was, leader. When this happened, was he a, a kid? Or was he an adult? He was a boy. You think he was a boy? I and what like about the what about Goliath? What do you think about Goliath? He a man. was a he was a giant. That's right. He was a giant. So this is going to be an epic battle against the little guy versus the big guy. Okay. So today's scripture is going to come from uh, 1 Samuel 17, uh, verses 1 through 16. And Melanie, would you read that for us? Sure. Saul and the men of Israel gathered and camped in the valley of Elah. Then they lined up in battle formation to face the Philistines. The Philistines were standing on one hill, and the Israelites were standing on another hill with a ravine between them. Then a champion named Goliath from Gath came out from the Philistine camp. He was nine feet, nine inches tall, and wore a bronze helmet and a bronze scale armor that weighed 125 pounds. There was bronze armor on his shins and a bronze sword was slung between his shoulders. His spear shaft was like a weaver's beam and the iron point of his spear weighed 15 pounds. In addition, a shield bearer was walking in front of him. He stood and shouted to the Israelite battle formations. Why do you come out to line up in battle formation? He asked them. Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose one of your men and have him come down against me. If he wins in a fight against me and kills me, we will be your servants. But if I win against him and kill him, then you will be our servants and serve us. Then the Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel today. Send me a man so we can fight each other. When Saul and all Israel heard these words from the Philistine, they lost their courage and were terrified. Now David was the son of Ephrathite from Bethlehem of Judah named Jesse. Jesse had eight sons and during Saul's reign was an old man. Jesse's three oldest sons had followed Saul to the war, and their names were Eliab, the firstborn, Abinadab, the next, and Shammah, the third, and David was the youngest. The three oldest had followed Saul, but David kept going back and forth from Saul to tend his father's flock in Bethlehem. Every morning and evening for forty days the Philistine came forward and took his stand. All right. Well, that's going to be the first part. So let, let's talk about some of the questions now, just to sum up what we talked about. Um, who was the enemy of the Israelites? The Philistines. That's right. Um, what are some of the What are some of the things that uh, this text tells us about Goliath? Um, he was like the leader, the champion of the Philippine army. Mm-hmm. And think about it, he was nine foot tall, and I think it said nine inches. 
and it talked about some of the armor that he wore. Did anything stand out about some of his armor? Um, I think in the verse it said it was like 110 pounds. And he had a shield bear somebody in front of him. So when I think about that, you know, I, I'm, I'm just a little, fit, a little bit under six foot tall. So if you think, well, a little bit more, but if you think about nine foot nine inches, I mean, that's bigger than the door over there that someone walks through there. And he comes out and he tells, you know, someone fight me, someone fight me. And this is not on the paper, but is, does anybody know how many days this kept going on? Days? Close. I think it was 10, wasn't it? Keep it going up. Uh, he kept doing this. I think it was verse... Um, but he did it for 40 days. His verse 16. Every morning and evening for 40 days he came out. There's a lot of significance to that 40 days in the Bible. But um, what was Goliath's challenge to the Israelite men? Um, to fight him? Mm -hmm. To come out and fight him one-on-one. -on -one. And what would the winner get? The winner would get to be the king. Well, the no. other people would have to, the, they would rule over the losing side of it. So that's kind of like being a king. They would come in and they would, he would get to rule over them. So now we're going to set the stage for an epic battle. The Philistine army outnumbered the Israelite army and the Philistines uh, likely had superior weapons and armor. We might understand the hesitation of the Israelites knowing that they were outgunned, but they had forgotten um, one very important part of the battle. So let's uh, move on to the next part, and this will be 1 Samuel um, 17, verses 17 through 58. Take a deep breath on this one. <laughs> Jesse had told his son David, Take this half bushel of roasted grain along with these loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Also, take these ten portions of cheese to their field commander. Check on the welfare of your brothers and bring a confirmation from them. They are with Saul, and all the men of Israel are in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. So David got up early in the morning, left the flock with someone to keep it, loaded up, and set out as Jesse had instructed him. He arrived at the perimeter of the camp as the army was marching out to its battle formation, shouting their battle cry. Israel and the Philistines lined up in battle formation facing each other. David left his supplies in the care of the quartermaster and ran to the battle line. When he arrived, he asked his brothers how they were. While he was speaking with them, suddenly the champion named Goliath, the Philistine from Gath, came forward from the Philistine battle line and shouted his usual words, which David heard. Then all the Israelite men saw Goliath. They retreated from him, terrified. Previously, an Israelite man had declared, Do you see this man who keeps coming out? He comes to defy Israel. The king will make the man who kills him very rich and will give him his daughter. The king will also make the household of the man's father exempt from paying taxes in Israel. David spoke to the men who were standing with him. What will be done for the man who kills that Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Just who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The people told him about the offer, concluding, That is what will be done for the man who kills him. David's oldest brother, Ali. Eliab listened as he spoke to the men and became angry with him. Why did you come down here, he asked. Who did you leave those few sheep with in the wilderness? I know your arrogance and your evil heart. You came down to see the battle. What have I done now, protested David. It was just a question. Then he turned from those beside him to others in front of him and asked about the offer. And the people gave him the same answer as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, so he had David brought to him. David said to Saul, Don't let anyone be discouraged by him. Your servant will go and fight that Philistine. But Saul replied, You can't go fight this Philistine. You're just a youth, and he's been a warrior since he was young. And David answered Saul, Your servant has been tending his father's sheep whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off a lamb from the flock. I went after it, struck it down, and rescued the lamb from its mouth. 
If it reared up against me, I would grab it by its fur, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. Then David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul had his own military clothes put on David. He put a bronze helmet on David's head and had him put on armor. And David strapped his sword on over the military clothes and tried to walk, but he was not used to them. I can't walk in these, David said to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off. Instead, he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in the pouch in his shepherd's bag. Then, with his sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. The Philistine came closer and closer to David with the shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he despised him because he was just a youth, healthy and handsome. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come against me with sticks? And then he cursed David by his gods. Come here, the Philistine called to David, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with a dagger, spear, and sword, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel's armies. You have defied him. Today the Lord will hand you over to me. Today I will strike you down, cut your head off, and give, you the, give the corpses of the Philistine camp to the birds of the sky and the creatures of the earth. Then all the world will know that Israel has a God, and this whole assembly will know that it is not by sword or by spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. He will hand you over to us. And when the, when the Philistines started forward to attack him, David ran quickly to the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in the back, took out a stone, slung it, and hit the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the ground. David defeated the Philistine with a sling and a stone. And even though David had no sword, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He grabbed the Philistine's sword, pulled it from its sheath, and used it to kill him. Then he cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they ran. The men of Israel and Judah rallied, shouting their battle cry, and chased the Philistines to the entrance of the valley and to the gates of Ekron. Philistine bodies were strewn all along Shearim Road to Gath and Ekron, and when the Israelites returned from the pursuit of the Philistines, they plundered their camps. David took Goliath's head and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put Goliath's weapons in his own tent. And when Saul had been had seen David going out to the, confront the Philistine, he asked Abner, the commander of the army, Whose son is this youth, Abner? My king, as surely as you live, I don't know, Abner replied. And the king said, Find out whose son this young man is. And when David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the Philistine's head in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem, David answered. Wow. Was that a little bit different than what you thought? Mm -hmm. Maybe or what you had heard? Um, why was David sent to the battle? Do y'all remember? Um, to, to take food. Yep. Mm -hmm and to, to bring back a report. And he did this numerous times over this 40-day period where he would go back and forth um, taking supplies. What did David witness as Goliath approached uh, the assembled army? Um, all the soldiers were afraid. Yep, they were scared. You know, it said that they lost their courage when he came out there. Um, how did Saul try to motivate some of the men to go against Goliath. What, what was kind of promised to them? That um, they would be rich and that they would have his daughter's hand. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't have to pay taxes. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Y'all don't know anything about taxes. <laughs> but uh, when Saul offered his armor to David, how did David respond? What did David say when he gave him his armor? He said, I can't wear that. It hadn't been tested. He said, I can't walk in that. 
So, so when David went out there, he didn't have any armor. So you have to picture, like when we talked about in the beginning, Goliath stands here, hundreds of pounds of armor. His spear, the tip of it's like 25 pounds. And here comes a, a guy walking out with, you know, a stone, um, stones and, and sticks. And it kind of, uh, it upset Goliath and it enraged him because he was, you know, saying, why are you sending this person out? You know, he's coming out, doesn't even have armor. Um, but what's one thing that David did have with him? God. That's right. He had God with him, and he knew that. Um, many people imagine David to being a little boy in this battle. However, that's not really an idea that can be supported with the text. David was described as a mighty man with valor in chapter 26, not a little boy. We also know that Saul was a head taller than the typical Israelite. So why would Saul offer a little boy his armor? David must have been about Saul's size or the armor would have never fit him. So that changes my opinion a little bit because I guess when you see the pictures or told the story when I was growing up, you know, I thought of, him, of, a, of a little person, but I guess compared to Goliath, he would be, uh, still be a little person. Um, what did David want uh, the assembly to know? That there is a God in Israel. That's right. So how did David defeat the big giant, Lila? Uh, he got his sling, uh -huh. and he hit him with a stone in the forehead, and then Goliath fell to the ground, and then he cut off his head. Oh, wow. That's pretty crazy. You know, when, when you think about it, I just think about the stone hitting him and, and that being kind of the end of it, but there's, there's a lot more to that. How did the two armies uh, respond to Goliath's defeat? Um, one fled in terror and the others ran after them. That's right. I, I can almost imagine this when I picture this, this account in the Bible, that you've got these two sides and you've got one side that, you know, they've got the, the big bad guy, they've got all the equipment, they've got the big army, and then over here you have the Israelites who... Uh, who don't have the same equipment, the same people, and they're scared to death and they're watching this. And I, I, I can only imagine probably people in the crowd are probably like, oh no, this is not going to end well. And uh, and then whenever the, the rock hit, uh, or the stone hit Goliath, I can just imagine there was probably silence. And then all of a sudden everybody took off in their own, own different ways. Uh, now that's a lot of my imagination, but I, I, I picture that it almost happened like that. Um, while the Israelites' army camped in fear, David would not stand um, for the Philistine army to blaspheme God and to stand in opposition to the army that God of God's chosen people. Although the soldiers cowered and looked to their own inabilities, God used David to lead Israel in defeating the army that he empowered through his spirit. Uh, David knew the character and the promises of God, and he acted in faith. This is not a uh, story merely that gives us some um, incentive to be brave like David or to stand up the, against the giants in our own lives. Rather, it's a true account of how God showed himself uh, might to save people from the Philistines. It was by faith, in spite of the lack of number of weapons they had, that they had victory. David trusted in God, and God used David to, to defeat Goliath. The big picture of today's lesson is that God is the true hero. Yes, David was the one who acted to defeat the foreign army, but it was because of his trust in God that he prevailed. Apart from God's empowerment, David would have surely cowered as the rest of the soldiers did. David knew that God had sent him um, and the Holy Spirit was empowering him to do what he was called to do. Just as he protected his father's flock from the bears and the lions, he also protected God's flock, flock Israel, from the Philistines, fully relying on God in each instance. So this last little question here, I mean, we can kind of go around and talk about this, but um, what did we learn today, or what did you learn today um, about placing your faith in God? Um, this also, I think I talked, I think another lesson that we did remind me of this, but faith over fear. Sometimes we can be very fearful of worldly things, but 
we just got to put our faith in God before those things. Mm -hmm. What about you? Do you have anything? Nothing's too big for God. That's right. Um, one of the biggest things that I think a lot of us struggle with in life is that, uh, and I use this term a lot in our Sunday school class, but uh, I like to have the steering wheel. You know, I like to be in control of my life, and uh, it's almost comical as we've gotten older that uh, when we have a, a five or a ten year plan uh, about how God intervenes, and uh, over time it's given me a peace knowing that God is in control of our lives and that, that no matter what happens, there's nothing that is too big for God. And whenever sometimes you're facing an obstacle in life, whether it be a medical crisis, a financial crisis, or just a spiritual crisis, to know that uh, nothing is too big for God. Because I know I get overwhelmed sometimes um, thinking about things in my life and knowing that uh, God is in control and uh, with him, we can take that mountain on, and, and we'll, we'll surely succeed um, with God on our side. So thank you for um, tuning in with us this week. Um, we're thankful that we can do this together as a family. Um, I hope that God has spoken to you, or, or maybe if you're having a, a troubled time, um, please contact the church. Um, someone from the church office would love to speak with you, and maybe can, can help you through God through those times. So. I will uh, close this out in prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I, I thank you for today, and I thank you for uh, the Bible, and I thank you for today's account with uh, David and Goliath. Lord, I know that there's a, a, a lot more to this account than what we've read, and I know that it speaks to us each time differently as, as we read it. Lord, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for being omniscient and, and all-knowing, all-loving God that you are. Lord, I just ask at this time, I pray for our leaders. I pray for our community, Lord. I just pray that your will would be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.